Black History Month, February. What better way to celebrate some young people doing some great things out in the community and across the globe. So ladies and gentlemen, you guys and girls are in for a treat today. Today, I have a very, very special guest coming to me all the way, but well, she's live right now in Washington, DC, and I'm here in Denver, Colorado. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna have a very great episode, Colorado Battalion celebrating at 30 under 30. But as always, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And I'm your host, Prince Dykes, the Prince of Investment. Y'all get ready. Stay tuned. Now, Colorado Battalion does great things here across the nation, especially here in Denver, Colorado. Today's episode, we're going to highlight two young ladies who are doing great things, who are alumni of this awesome program. When I moved to Denver here four years ago, and uh, I think I was a, I was a guest speaker. I think that's how I got introduced to uh, the Colorado Battalion. And I saw all the amazing things they're doing for young people, especially young people of color, getting them mentorship guidance. So it's only right that we turn around and honor some of the alumni who were awarded the 30 under 30. But without further ado, let me introduce my first guest today. This is Miss Jalen Turo. Hopefully I got that right. She's coming in live from Washington, D.C. So let's bring her on. And Jalen, how are you doing today, Jalen? <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> Hi, Hi, how are you? Okay. So let's talk a little bit about you. So you were born and raised in Denver. You went off to Howard University. Um, and you were pretty much just an art fanatic, it seems like, right? Oh, yes, definitely. And you want to go back to get your, you graduated. When did you graduate? December? I actually just graduated this past December. But that's what it was. December, you graduated. And now you're looking at going to get your master's degree in arts, right? Yes, in art therapy specifically. Okay, great. So congratulations on that. And also, you were very involved in your community in Washington, D.C. Tell us some of the things you did out there in Washington, D.C. Yeah, definitely. So I was a part of a service and uh, activism organization called 10 for 10. Um, we spent our summer of 2020 basically um, fundraising and going out into the community, um, trying to raise awareness and definitely leading some marches and some demonstrations. So it was a great way to um, stay active, especially during like a moment in time where we were very disconnected as a whole, as a nation, as a world, honestly. Um, and distribute the necessary resources that people needed and amplify their voices in as many ways as we could. So some of, what are some of the demonstrations or some of the things that were important to you to go out and demonstrate for? Um, well, one of the things we did first um, was distribute water bottles down, um, if you guys are familiar with the Five Points area. Um, so we made sure that the population of people down there without housing um, had at least water at bare minimum. We got thousands of water bottles distributed that day and my older brother came with me. So that was really impactful for me. Um, I was grateful to have that moment with him and um, I was grateful to be able to give back to the community. I'm from around Five Points. So that's like where I grew up, where I was born and raised. Um, another demonstration that we did was called the Rise Up Rally. Uh, instead of celebrating Fourth of July, we definitely um, we got a large crowd in front of the Capitol building and we had a lot of speakers come um, and kind of attest to their stories, share their stories about growing up in a marginalized community. Um, we had artists present. That, that was where I presented like one of my pieces for the very first time in front of a very large crowd. Mm -hmm. um, so we always incorporated the arts and uh, amplifying and promoting the voices of our community and the people who look like us. Got it. So tell us about your you're born and raised here in Denver, correct? Yes. So what was life growing up in Denver, Colorado? I loved it. I get that question a lot being out here in D.C. Um, everybody's like, Colorado, that's so far away. What is it like? It was beautiful. Um, I have a lot of friends back home that I'm really grateful for and I still keep in contact with. I spent a lot of my time growing up in the museums um, with my family and I've always loved academics. So I was always involved in my school and extracurriculars, sports, all of the above. Um, my parents made sure that I stayed busy and I stayed um, you know, doing things that could help me become a well-rounded individual. So I definitely, you know, shout out to my parents for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shout out to your parents. Okay. Now, 
Which one is colder, Washington, D.C. or Denver, Colorado? Definitely D.C. I don't know what it is. I think it's the the wind chill, but that'll take you straight out. <laughs> well, because, you know, Denver is known for the outside people as being cold because they see snow all the time. They're like, oh, I bet you it's, it's just freezing all the time. And I try to tell people, like, it's not as cold as, as it looks. You know, I lived on the uh, up in Connecticut and I just was in D.C. a couple weeks ago too and i'm like man it's just colder i don't know if it's the water or whatever is going on right yeah, got waterfront <laughs> mm -hmm. now tell us some of the things you got into you got a chance to visit egypt while at howard university you went to hbcu you went off to howard uh, not howard university but to egypt how was your trip to egypt i think about my trip to egypt every single day i still wear this cartouche around my neck from my trip there um it says my name in hieroglyphs um, so I did a study abroad trip and it was two weeks long. I studied with the um, Africana Studies Department at Howard University. So I was there with three professors from Howard as well as two professors from Morehouse. Um, and it was a beautiful experience. We went into, I think, five pyramids total. We did three pyramids in one day once though. And we traveled all throughout Egypt. So we started at the top, we made it down to the island of Aswan um, through Cairo. So it was really, it was a very pivotal time in my life. And I'm really, really grateful that I took that opportunity. Um, I was able to get a scholarship to fund me as well for that trip. So that was really, um, it was, it was great. And I'm so glad that my school, my HBCU has those types of endeavors for their students to take. And it was a moment for me to connect with my homage and um, basically just learn more about our roots, our history, um, where everything started initially before, you know, coming to America and being African-American, all of the above. Now, not only did you graduate college, looking to go back for your master's degree, you're also the executive coordinator for a nonprofit, right? Um, so I am the communications director for communications. Howard University Alternative Spring Break. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, so that is um, a community service organization, uh, student led at Howard, where we basically go to other uh, communities, other cities, both domestically and abroad. Um, and we do community service because a lot of a lot of places contribute to Howard's history and Howard's success. So we want to make sure that the students have the opportunity not only to appreciate these places, but appreciate the people in these places and help them in whatever way we can. So we do a lot of volunteer work. That's our, our motto is honesty and truth and service, excellence and truth and service. Um, so we do as much service as we can. Now, down in Puerto Rico, you're getting ready to go back to Puerto Rico, right? Yes, I am. So you did some community service down there? Yeah, yeah, with Alternative Spring Break. Okay, so it was connected back to Howard University, to your current job now. Okay, nice, that's that's awesome. You know what, I have never been to Puerto Rico. How was Puerto <laughs> Rico? Puerto Rico, when we went, it was right after, it was two years after um, Hurricane Maria had hit. So oh. we were down there um, trying to, our initiative was to help with restoration and youth empowerment. So we were um, doing some demolition in houses, tearing down houses that needed to be refurbished after the hurricane. And we were painting schools that had some water damage um, and just needed to be beautified so the students felt welcomed back into their space of learning and their space of education. Um, we were able to also volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club in Puerto Rico, nice. which is great because I am not fluent in Spanish and there was definitely a language barrier, but I was able to connect with those kids and have fun and play. Um, and it was just, it was really invigorating. Okay, so now what is, besides going back to school and getting your grad degree in arts, because I know you love arts, you were, featured in a few art shows out in uh, the DC area. Tell us about that. How did you get, how'd you get into, in, into the art community of the DC area? So my major at Howard was psychology and I minored in painting. Um, and so I've always had a love for the arts. I've always had a passion. Like this is one of my pieces behind me. Oh, nice. So um, I, the DC, area in the DC scene has a very strong art presence, especially black people in the arts. Um, so we have this thing called Art All Night in DC, where you basically go out to different spots downtown and talk to artists, buy their art. And while I was out there, I was introduced to 
an artist who goes by DC um, Art Magic, and he hosts rooftop um, private art shows almost weekly. So I've been involved um, in those art shows. I've been able to network, sell my work there, mm -hmm. and meet a lot of the other artists in DC who are prominent and also up and coming. Um, so it's been a great platform for me to see what it's like to be an art vendor, um, see what the DC art scene is like, and definitely like hone in on my networking skills, especially in the art world. Okay, very important. Now the next thing I got to ask you, what's next for Jalen? You're only 22 years old, <laughs> going to college, you are, you know, you're giving back to your community, you're being active in your community. I understand completely why you won, you know, uh, the 30 under 30, being involved in your community, giving back to your community, traveling abroad, finishing school, following your passion of art, selling art, things like that. What is next for Jalen at 22 years old? <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting my master's degree in art therapy um, and seeing where that takes me. I definitely would like to be able to practice art therapy in galleries or museum spaces. So I'm focusing on that niche right now. I'm trying to get as much experience as I can, especially in galleries. Right now, I am the graduate intern at the Howard University um, Gallery in the Fine Arts Building. So I am making sure that I'm creating connections in the museum and art world, and I am applying as much pressure as I can to pursuing my degree in art therapy. I like that, applying the pressure, keep the pressure <laughs> on. Now I wanna ask you this question. As a young black woman, what advice you, would, especially with the climate that's going on, things that's going on in the world and in the country and things like that, what advice, because you know, you you moved to DC, which is a pretty predominantly black city, you know, it's chocolate city, right? Versus, yeah. you know, in Denver, Colorado is not as much, right? So growing up as a, you know, coming from Colorado, it's a young black woman, what advice or what mentorship you would give to the younger version of you or to the young little black girl that's out there? I would say follow your dreams, even if they seem like they're far, just go for it. I think one thing that I um, I knew um, as a senior in high school and I was applying to my schools was that I wanted to leave Colorado. And it's not even to say that I don't love Colorado because I do. It's just, I know that there's so much out in the world to go discover and find out. And I honestly had never even been to Washington DC before I applied to Howard. And I, as soon as I got in, I didn't go either. I first step foot on Howard's campus when I was moving in with my parents. So just, Take a chance and believe in yourself, put yourself out there, you know, apply to whatever comes across your, your surface, whatever opportunity presents itself, take it because you never know if you'll end up in Egypt or Puerto Rico or Washington, D.C., but there's only one way to find out. Okay. Well, last thing before we got to get out of here, we got to take a, a break. How can people find more about you or if people want to get in contact with you for your art, see your art? which is social media, all that good stuff like that. So if people want to stalk you or whatever the case may be, how can they do that? Tell us, how can we find you? My art Instagram is J-M-A-R-I-E visuals with a Z. Um, so J Marie visuals. And um, yeah, if you type my name in, you can find me on LinkedIn as well. Jalen Tarode on LinkedIn. Okay. All right, y'all got Miss Jalen. She's coming from Washington, D.C. I'm out here in Denver, Colorado, and we're broadcasting live right now in Honolulu, Hawaii, which it seems like it's late, but it's actually early in Hawaii. <laughs> A little early. The sunlight is starting to go down in Hawaii. But we want to thank you for coming on. Is there anything you want to say before we get out of here? Thank you so much for having me, and thank you, Miss Cheryl. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Miss Cheryl. She definitely loves you guys and always want to keep in contact with the alumni. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of Trauma Age, we're going to take a quick break. I mean, a very quick break. And we're going to come back with more for the Colorado Battalion 30 for 30. Two major crises have descended upon humanity. Climate change and the coronavirus. They may seem independent of each other. In fact, they are very closely linked. The emergence of COVID-19 on top of climate change is a spiraling crisis and it's just the beginning.
And we are back here with the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado via Honolulu, Hawaii. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button on all the podcasts and platforms that you may catch us on. So we're back. Colorado Battalion 30 for 30 highlighting on Black History Month. What better way to highlight people who are out here doing young people of color, Black History Month that are out here doing great things, especially from natives of the Denver, Colorado area that's gone off to do great things in the Colorado Battalion who was selected for the 30 for 30. So the next guest we have, she's um, she's Hampton University. She's right here in Denver, Colorado still. She's um, went out to Hampton University. She is um, she a major in business marketing. I don't know why I'm tripping over my words a little bit here. Major in business marketing, done great things out there i didn't get her age i didn't have her age down i didn't get her age but we would ask her that anyway but she's gone to college done great things and entrepreneurship y'all know something that i love she wants to get in real estate multifamily homes i want to know why does she want to do that and more how she's going to do it you know in this crazy world especially in the denver market real estate is crazy all over the globe we're probably in the start of world war three right now we don't know but anyway coming to us live miss t angela will how will hide how are you doing today I'm doing well, thank you. Happy Black History Month. Yes, definitely. And what better way to highlight what you uh, young ladies are doing? Um, we had Miss Jalen earlier. We got you now. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself for the people who don't know. I didn't get your age, by the way, too. I am 22 years old. So like you said, thank you for that beautiful intro. I am Tiangela Wilhite. I am originally a Denver native. I graduated from East High School for anyone who knows where that is or what that is. And yes, I am 22 years old. I am currently the executive coordinator at a nonprofit organization entitled Chic. And I am a God fearing woman with big hmm. dreams. <laughs> Got, it. Got it. Great. So, congratulations on your selection for 30 under 30, right? Colorado Battalion reaching out to the alumni. I got to ask you this, right? Great things you did. You went off to school, you graduated, all those good things. You want to get into real estate. Why is that? So my love for real estate, give you a little bit of a backstory, started for my love of interior design. With interior design, it's such a broad world and there's so many different endeavors and avenues that you can go into. And going through college, going through my major at Hampton, meeting a couple of mentors and things like that, I really just learned how I could kind of marry the two. I want to go into real estate to marry my passion for interior design and bring the element of raising to a higher level of financial literacy, but not for myself only, for my family and for my community. I'm somebody who is very passionate about African Americans and the level of wealth that we can create for ourselves. And I want to be a teacher of that and a steward of that as somebody to say, here in multifamily or here in other realms of real estate, you are able to grow your family wealth. You are able to learn financial literacy and gain the tools to change your life, change your family's life. So. Okay. Now I got to ask you this question. Now you, you want to go into, you, you are, you want to go into real estate, but you have business marketing. I was told that you was pretty good at content creating. What are you, how are you creating content out there? Yes. I also do content creation. I'm a little bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to creation, but in terms of content creation, I run various social media pages. I'm an independent contractor to individuals who would like anything such as a flyer or reel or an Instagram post that is going to expand their brand and expand their story in a creative and unique way. And mm -hmm. That's one of the ways that I give back to people that I past work with, that I connect with now, and going forward, anyone that I meet, I always try to um, give them tips, pointers, any help that I can in the areas of social media. Okay. Now, you spoke about your passion for real estate. Um, why do you feel real estate is a good way to create wealth? You know, and your person, because you know, you have things like, why not stocks? Why not? you know, uh, businesses, franchises, restaurants, and, you know, hairstylists, you know, the list goes on of things you can do. Why real estate? 
Absolutely. There are various ways and avenues to create wealth. I personally, from what I've learned, from what I've studied, from what I've implemented myself, have learned, one, the quickness of it. When you think about stocks, stocks is a 10-year, 20-year game. That's the long game. And a lot of people like to play the long game, and that's okay. But real estate, because of how the market flows, and if you're following the market and knowing the correct trends and seeing the deals that you can jump in on and, and ride that wave up, mm -hmm. it's a much quicker way to acquire larger amounts of wealth. For instance, in a multifamily building or a unit, Typically, what a lot of people tend to do is do a hold process where they hold from three to five years. And in that hold process, updating the property a little bit, kind of turning the tenants around to get that higher caliber of tenant, bringing the property to a certain level and standard, the ROIs and percentages and ROI meaning return on investment and percentages that you can receive from your initial investment are 25% plus. And when you think about the stock market, you're looking at smaller single digit percentages. Now, have you seen Will Smith's latest movie that he did with uh, the Williams sisters? Have you seen that? Yes, I have. Did that inspire you? Absolutely. That was an amazing film. Shout out to Will Smith. He's mm -hmm. one of the people that I look up to and I follow along with and some of the trends of his life of how he's reached success and how he's still a humble, God-fearing individual. And that absolutely inspired me, not only as a Black woman seeing mm -hmm. the empowerment of other Black women, but more so having that feeling of believing in yourself, having that feeling and that drive to know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond what anyone says, whatever the haters say, whatever's going on in the media or the news, if you are the believer in yourself and you can carry yourself to those higher heights, then you can do anything and the limit is endless. I like that. What made me think of that was I saw the way you was thinking at 22 years old, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to tell you what I was doing at 22, but at 22 <laughs> years old, to see the way you're thinking, you're looking at real estate, you're looking at return on investment, and also you already evaluated opportunity cost of like, hey, look at these returns, look at stocks. Stocks are a, a longer term game. I can look at the rate of return, especially being a Denver native, you've seen this real estate market just go crazy. Right. So the seeing that and the part of the movie, I can't say how Will Smith said in the movie, but he said, you know, a woman that can think, right, think and figure things out and use critical thinking skills. That's what something that I picked up on. So I want to definitely applaud you on it. Right? So the thing about it is. I like the confidence of what you know, exactly what you want to do. See, with me, I was about 30 years old before I figured out like, hey, you know what, this is what I want to do. So knowing what you want to do at a young age, you know, you have to move around or whatever, knowing what you want to do and knowing how to get there is very important, right? So in your grand scheme of things, I got to ask you this question too. Knowing that you're coming from Denver, come, you know, going to school, going to college, get involved with the nonprofit organization, um, doing things there, get into digital marketing, even being versatile to know how to, hey, I can create reels. That's a whole nother revenue stream for you, right? Yes, yes, it is. I would um, tell a young person. What would you tell a young person? Who wants to do content creation? Just, you know, overcoming, thinking of looking at things, someone who's young. Some people are from a little small town, right? That are like, man, you know, overcoming obstacles, thinking they can do something. What would you tell your young self that you've learned so far? <sighs> this might be a, a shocking or an unconventional answer, but honestly, you have to have God first in your life. You have to have that anchor that is ordering your steps over mm -hmm. so that you know who you are, you know where you've been, and you know where you're going. Everything that we are as beings, everything that we are as people and individuals, we are made up of the spiritual, and that matters. And 
everything is ordered and aligned in the ways that it is for you. You just have to find that connection within yourself and within whatever higher power or being that you believe in. And I truly believe that you cannot fail any circumstance, any issue. Um, I wasn't a silver spoon kid. I wasn't somebody who came from a lavish lifestyle or a family background or anything like that. But having that faith that was instilled in me and in my family also that has been passed down from generation to generation has allowed all of us, not just me, others in my family as well to go on and do amazing things. Sometimes you have to stop and ask yourself, you know, is this real? Is this really happening? But yes, it's real and believe in yourself and know that your steps are ordered and where you're supposed to be, you're there. Nice. Congratulations. Congratulations on that. And I like the way you're thinking on that. Now you got to, I got to ask you, how can people follow you? You said you, you're an entrepreneur. You know, let's see, what are some of your entrepreneur endeavors? I know you say you do the Instagram and one day you want to do the real estate or you may already be working on it now. What are some of your entrepreneur endeavors? Yes. So some that I've started on my own is just smaller entrepreneur endeavors, specifically Getting into multifamily, but smaller multifamily. Multifamily is such a large global scale that you can reach the highest of heights, but a lot of people don't know that you can just start with a duplex, you know, one or a two unit um, under an LLC, have that operating as a business and bringing in streams of income and revenue for you monthly that can afford your bigger dreams and afford your bigger entrepreneurial goals. Got it. Okay. Now, how can people find you you know you do digital content you know you gotta market yourself at all time i know you got your business marketing how can people find you how can people find out more about you and uh maybe support you connect with you all those all those type of things like that that's if you want to be you know connected <laughs> with and follow all the type of stuff too Absolutely. Um, I'm in the process of creating my own website. It is not 100% finished yet, okay. but it will be. But you can also follow me on Facebook, Tiangela Wilhite, as well as LinkedIn that has all of my contact information, um, all of my past history. Um, I'm not comfortable giving out my personal Instagram at this moment. <laughs> okay, no problem with that. But for sure, Facebook and LinkedIn are the two avenues that I normally use to promote myself and to promote my businesses. Great, great way of thinking, you know, great way of thinking. So and anything else that you want to leave anybody there with that's listening, that's going to catch the playback, that's tuning into this live? Really, I just want to say, um, find that thing. Find that thing inside of yourself that you think about all night long, all night when you sleep, every day when you wake up and chase that thing, because that is the thing that is meant and intended for you to do and be. And if you believe it, you can achieve it. All right, you guys and girls, y'all heard it here. Miss Tangela, Miss Tangela Will, is it, I can't get it right, Will Height. Right? Yes, you got it right. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Got it. Just tend to well. Thank you for coming on. Congratulations to you on a Colorado 30 under 30. Continue to do great things. Keep that confidence up. And thanks for being a great role model. Absolutely. Thank you, Prince, for this opportunity, for this platform. Shout out to Colorado Botillion Cotillion. Excellent endeavor. If you ever are in the Denver area and interested in being involved, it's really a program that can catapult you to higher heights. So Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, y'all hear y'all heard it here today or tonight. You know where you're catching it from. As always, I'm your gracious host, the Prince of Investment, Prince Dice, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.